Well, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. Uh, but before we get too far today, we need to check in with my assistant. There she is. Are you working hard, girl? Yes, that's my good Molly. Oh, that's my good Molly. You gonna get your belly rubbed? Huh? Oh. Shall we get to work? All right, let's get to work. Okay, so this will be the, we're, we've got the chest of drawers done, the block front chest. It, it's done, it's ready to be, to put the finish on. Uh, so this will be the last episode of the block front chest. Um, and the finishing process is just as important as the rest of it, if not more important. You can have a perfectly executed a uh, piece of furniture and then ruin it uh, by putting the, a bad finish on it. Um, so, and even, and the reverse is true. You can have a, a, a piece of furniture that you made that wasn't quite right, uh, but a good finish on it, uh, well executed, will make it look a lot better. Um, so, it's important. So, um, the, the first thing is to decide what what kind of finish to put on it um, and uh, my understanding of the early f the, the, the period that this was the, the original was made in this uh, they kind of made their own varnishes uh, shellac was available but it had to come from the halfway around the world so it wasn't like it was used all the time. Uh, I'm gonna use shellac, since it's a little more period accurate than a polyurethane, of course. Um, but looking at the chest, and you can't really see it on the camera as well, um, the top drawer is lighter than the rest, than the other drawers. The, it, it basically is a case of that the four quarter stock, the one inch stock that I had, is all from the same tree, and that is lighter than the eight quarter or the two inch thick uh, stuff I used for the bottom three drawers and the frame and the bracket feet. So the, the sides and the top and the top drawer are a little bit lighter just already. Um, cherry like mahogany the, the original was made in with mahogany but the two of them get darker as they age uh, but cherry kind of differs from tree to tree how much darker it will get so i think i'm going to end up with a top drawer that's going to end up being a lot lighter than the the rest of the other drawers i mean you won't see the the rest of it as much but that contrast between the drawers so I'm gonna try to darken, darken everything right out of the chute. Um, so you could use a stain or a dye. Now the difference is a stain, uh, think of stain as being muddy water. Uh, it has pigment in there, uh, in the stain, and water has the mud, or the, the dirt, and so the the higher the pigment, the thicker the stain is, uh, and the darker you can make it in the on the wood. But that's more mud, and it kind of clouds, just like a muddy. Uh, it clouds the uh, the grain pattern, and it kind of hides it. And, and basically, that pigment stays on the surface, and you have to wipe off. Uh, you have to wipe it off with the grain, or you're you're going to uh, you're going to see <laughs> going to see it. Uh, dye works a little differently. It it soaks into the wood, um, so it doesn't hide the grain pattern as much. So I'm going to use a dye, uh, and, and and I'm going to you can put that on with a rag or a brush, but it's gonna soak in more on the end grains. Uh, and you, you have to get it on there fairly, 
even. You can do that with a rag. You, you can actually get then wet the rag and wipe some of it off while it's still wet if you get too dark. Um, but I'm going to spray it. I've got a sprayer, um, so I'm going to spray it to get an even coat on the thing. But I'm going to use a water-based dye, which means that uh, when it gets wet, the wood gets wet, the, the, it raises the grain. There will be little fuzzies that come up on it. Um, so what we're going to do is sand everything to a uniform level. Uh, and I've been kind of doing that as we've been building it, so I don't have a lot to do. But I want to sand everything to 220 grit um, by hand, no power sanders. And then the end grains I'm going to touch up with 320 or 400 grit uh, so that it, it isn't as prone to soak up that dye as much. Um, and then we're going to take a wet rag and dampened, uh, dampened the, the furniture or whatever, um, and then let that dry overnight. That will raise the grain and give us those fuzzies. And then we're going to go back and take a brown paper bag, just brown paper, and just rub those fuzzies off of there. Um, you know, if you sand it again, you're just going to, the same thing will happen when you put the dye on. So we can get most of that fuzziness, uh, by doing that first application of water. And then when we spray the dye, it won't, it'll be still some fuzzies, but it won't be as much. And again, we'll just take a, a brown paper bag and wipe it all down, rub it all down smooth. And then we're gonna put on about three coats of shellac uh, over the dye to kind of seal it. And then I'm gonna use a stain, a gel stain as a glaze. Um, the stain isn't going to soak in because we've sealed it with shellac. Uh, but <clears throat> so you put the put the gel stain on and then you wipe off as much as you can. And what happens is that it'll stay in the crevices and it kind of helps make the project look older and uh, it makes the carvings a little more. Uh, you know, it gives some depth to it because of the dark. Uh, spots in the crevices in that so it won't add a lot to the color but it, it will help uh, look at then we'll put more coats of shellac on there uh, and the top will have to uh, rub that out eventually we'll we'll let we'll get uh, maybe like six or eight coats of shellac on there and then uh, let that set for a week or two to let the shellac harden and then we'll rub that out and make it all nice and s smooth and then the last thing we'll do is put some paste wax on it that's sort of the game plan um, the thing is I gotta wait till the weather cooperates I just have to spray outside in the garage so uh, we need a week of no rain and fairly decent weather so and that ain't gonna happen for a little bit uh, so it'll probably be April. So we got to get things ready. And this is kind of what uh, the, the progression. This is just raw cherry and then uh, with, with the dye and then a coat of shellac and the glaze and then more shellac. So that's kind of where we're, we're going to end up with something like this. I try to do this, make a little card like this for in, in the list what I did for every project. Uh, so I know I got sort of a record of what, what the finish was and, and how it was achieved. So, um, so right now I just have to get to work sanding. And we'll kind of pop in a, after each, each step and, uh, and watch the progression, but it's gonna take a while. Okay, a quick little lesson on uh, period hardware, or the screws, um, I'm, I imagine on the internet there's somewhere that sells reproduction screws, but um, we can get relatively close with hardware store screws as long as they're slotted, right? They, they've got, a, they got a, a slot, not a Phillips or a square Robertson head or any of those, there's dozens 
dozens and dozens of the new styles, but they all started in the uh, early 20th century. So, um, so to be period, it's got to be slotted. But this shiny zinc coating on these things isn't right, and we can we can strip that finish off of there really easy, and so then they'd be just the bare steel screws or washers or whatever. And that's a little closer. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're still, you can still tell they're machine made, but it's at least a little closer to what the period uh, screws would have looked like. So the way you do that is start with some warm water. Uh, that's deep enough for all your hardware to fit in. So I got all these screws that's gonna screw the frame to the chest and then the top to the chest and I got washers that go with it. So you just wanna make sure that it's all covered. I got a little bit too much water in there, I guess. Uh, and then the citric acid is uh, what you wanna get. And you get that at uh, the grocery store in the canning section that's used for uh, canning. So uh, and it doesn't take a lot. Um, all in there. And uh, so that'll let me get a stir stick here. Mix that up, and that'll start bubbling within a couple of minutes. That this gives off a gas as the zinc comes off, and the screws have a relatively thin coat, so it won't take long—30, 40 minutes—to uh, get them that up. I maybe like I said an hour or so. So we let it sit, and then we'll come back and. Uh, we should have plain steel hardware, and then we'll uh, have to dry them, you know, rinse them, dry them, and then this is safe to put down the drain. It's not, it's not toxic at all, so um, I think you can already see it's starting to bubble. So we're good. We just need to let it sit. Okay, a little time lapse here. And uh, let's pull one of these out of there. Fingers are long enough to reach down in there. There we go. Now see, that's just a bare steel now. No, no shiny surface. Now these will rust, so we need to uh, rinse them just to get the rest of the mixture off of there. And then I'll uh, spread them out and uh, use a, I've got a heat gun, but a hair dryer or something like that would work just to get them all all dry because they will rust. So now we have at least the hint of authentic screws. Well, so there they are all, all finished. I got one here that uh, is still shiny. I think that, that that is a stainless steel screw that got mixed in with the screws at the hardware store. You see, it's a different uh, sheen than the rest of them. So I'm gonna have to do this again for that, just that one screw. Anyway, so we got all those hardware ready. Okay, I went ahead and put on the die with uh, just uh, by hand with the rag, and it looks it looks pretty red, doesn't it? Um, it's almost pink looking in places, but when you apply a little bit of uh, just just plain alcohol, let me get this. Here, there we go. And you can see that that it, it doesn't look quite so so bad. And that's just with a clear finish on it, it. It takes off that. So when I put on the uh, shellac, the shellac is brown. I'm using garnet shellac, and uh, so that'll that'll take that. It'll tone down that red quite a bit. So the next thing is to, I need to make a, a fresh batch of shellac. Okay, to make the shellac, uh, 
Shellac comes in different, uh, comes in flakes, like this. Uh, but it comes in different colors. This is Garnet, and uh, then Blonde, and then there's one in between. Blonde is just like the name suggests, and it has to do with the amount that they've been processed. This is the least, this is de-waxed, yeah, de-waxed Garnet, and then the, the next grade is processed a little more, and then the, the Blonde is processed the most, and it's actually bleached to give it the blonde color. And you, it, it's uh, rated in pounds of cut. So it's one pound of shellac to one gallon of alcohol is a one pound cut. And, the, and then you can do two pound cuts, which is a little thicker, and three pound cuts, which is really thick. And I think the stuff you buy in the can at the uh, home centers, I think that's usually around two two pound cut. Um, so if you're gonna brush it, it's, it's easier to brush at one pound cut um, than it is on the thicker ones. And even spraying it, I, I kind of go for about a one and a half pound cut uh, to give me the most, those coverage. So if you, I'm not gonna make a gallon of this and I don't have uh, one and a half pounds of shellac, so I'm gonna make a, this is, I've got 16 ounces of alcohol, and I just use this uh, denatured alcohol. I get this this uh, new, uh, it's green. It has less of the, the bad chemicals in it. They, that's regular alcohol, uh, and then they put poisons in it so you can't drink it. Uh, and this, that has, a, the least amount of poisons in it so uh, anyway so we got that alcohol so now we need to I just use a postal scale like this and then uh, then I put the shellac flakes in there till I get to uh, three ounces into 16 ounces of alcohol is a pound and a half cut packets in there to keep the humidity down that there is a shelf life on the on the uh, there's no date on this bag or anything but there is you can get flakes be too old and uh, what happens is when it's old is it won't dissolve very well in the uh, in the alcohol if it takes forever to to dissolve, the, it's probably no good. And the, the mixed, once we mix this, it has a shelf life about six or eight months. Um, I put a date on the bottle when I mix it. can last a little bit longer um, but after after like six months you, you want to test it <clears throat> test it before you use it and put brush a little bit of it on something and see if it dries if it doesn't dry uh, dry right then it's no good it, it'll stay gummy and so I use an old uh, coffee grinder to kind of speed the process up Basically, these these flakes will dissolve in the alcohol, but I can kind of chop them up by putting them in here, and uh, they'll they'll dissolve quicker. This way, it may take a, a day or two for all those flakes to get dissolved. This. This will dissolve all in about eight hours. I usually make it in the evening and then let it sit overnight. First to that, like I said, we have to get this so that it all melts. See, it's 
kind of if uh, if that all stays gummed at the bottom after it's been sitting for a while, that's when it's no good. So we're gonna let this sift. I'm gonna just shake it every once in a while, get all the stuff out of the bottom. Uh, but uh, I gotta get that lid. Lid is leaking a little bit. Um, so we let that sit uh, for eight hours or overnight, and then we need to filter it. And to filter it, I made a batch last night. And uh, see here, it's, it's pretty, everything's come off the bottom, so it's all pretty well mixed. But there are Im impurities in the shellac. Uh, the shellac is a, comes from the shellac bug, and it's excretions on the tree. And uh, so there's, there can be little dirt and stuff in it, so we're going to just run it through a filter. We're just going to run that through. There we go. And we are set. Not a lot of stuff in there, just a little bit. Just kind of see it. See it in there. So this batch is ready to roll. <clears throat> I just got to put a new date on it. Just put a piece of tape and put a date on that, and then we'll uh, mix that other one. Now, now we have to wait for a good, uh, good stretch of good weather so we can spray this. So there we have it. All right, the chest is done. We had some good weather. We sprayed three coats of shellac, put the glaze on, wipe the glaze off, more coats of shellac, rub out the finish, put a coat of a coat of dark brown paste wax um, so it's it's in place now up in my office um, so what I've done is taken some still pictures and made a little slideshow that it will play here in a second and the black and white photos are of the original I tried to mimic that same view on my uh, on my reproduction I'm not a professional photographer I didn't have a studio um, so but here it is. Uh, so that is the end of, of this, uh, this episode and this project.